Hey, good morning, everybody. Pastor Brian Doe back here. I hope uh, all is well and you've had a great week, uh, all things considered. So glad for you to join me um, on this Sunday morning uh, as you're are watching this message. Uh, man, I just want to start off with a little story. Uh, last year, uh, during this pandemic, you know, my wife and I, we randomly uh, came across a ministry uh, in our area and in this area that, that gets uh, food rations uh, from the state to distribute to people in need, you know, like milk or veggies or, or fruit and things like that. And, you know, they, they got a lot from the state and uh, we learned that they get a lot of leftovers and they don't really know what to do with all of those leftovers. So uh, my wife, Stephanie, you know, she, she uh, bless her heart, she started bringing boxes home, uh, lots of boxes of, of these fo of food, milk, veggies, and fruit. She started bringing them home and uh, distributing them to neighbors, um, some folks in our neighborhood uh, that, that, are, that are more in need than others. Um, and, you know, we've almost kind of become like a, like a neighborhood grocer, grocer. <laughs> and so it's kind of turned into an operation. And uh, like I said, some less fortunate folks are getting food and, you know, there's people that I know to be uh, non-believers are, are also getting uh, food from this whole like operation. And, you know, one man in particular, um, you know, I drop off so the food to his house and uh, each time I drop something off at his house, um, you know, I share a little bit more uh, uh, with him about who I am and, you know, what I'm about and, um you know, uh, uh, you know, it started with just saying, God bless. And then, you know, another time I dropped food off, you know, Jesus loves you. And, you know, uh, I want to keep adding to the story and adding to the conversation. And um, I'm doing this in the name of Jesus. Uh, this is, I'm, I'm doing this in Jesus's name. And, you know, ultimately, I hope to lead it to a gospel conversation. Um, and, you know, it, you know, uh, my prayer is that God uses this crazy operation for something truly redemptive, um, uh, and for His name's sake. And, and you know, we're we're in this short study called Refresh. And when everything has changed and will continue to change, what are the core functions that we as a church? need to focus on, you know, those core things that never change no matter what. You know, today we're going to talk about the importance of connecting with people outside of the church. You know, last week we talked about, we talked about connecting with uh, each other inside the church, right? You know, but no, no matter what's going on around us, the call to, lit, to sharing and living out the gospel in our communities never changes. It never changes. So, you know, the purpose uh, the purpose of my purpose today is really to, to, to tell you, to make you understand because God built community with us at a great cost to himself through the cross, through the gospel, that leads to us engaging with our community at a cost to ourselves. Um, and, but there's a way to go about it. There's a way to go about it. And in this text today, we're going to learn about five ways to go about it. And man, I'm going to tell you a lot of stories today. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, we're in Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. So, so let's get into that text. I'm going to read the text and then we'll pray. The scripture says, it says, Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Let's pray. Father, God, I... Uh, I thank you for this time, Lord, and I just ask you that you would speak to us um, just in the way that each one of us individually needs to hear this, Lord. Uh, we all come in um, into hearing messages uh, with our own unique contexts and situations, and um, but God, I, I pray that you speak to us uniquely, each one of us, uh, through this scripture and how it might relate to us in our relationship with you, in our relationship with others um, in our communities. And uh, thank you 
and um, and we we love you, and we pray this in Jesus' name, Amen. Man, so I, you know the first thing that we really see here in these five ways that we go about it, and and really relating to a, to a community outside the church within our community is is being steadfast in prayer. Being steadfast in prayer. We're talking about prayer. Paul now has been setting his sights on Christian households and and how our new identity in Christ translates to relationships in the homes. Well, today, he takes us outside the households and into the streets, into our neighborhoods, right? The Ditech office, right? The Mission Kids office, the bank, the Berkshire Hathaway office, truck stops, right? The high school, the high schools, the Wegmans, the grocery stores, the YMCA, you know, the hospitals. Paul gives his readers and us some directives and how we relate with others outside of the church and the households. And the first one that he gives us is prayer. It's prayer. We need to be praying. We need to tune in to God's frequency. And we do this through prayer, right? Now, as the gospel heats up our heart, as the gospel heats up our heart and our heart begins to be bendable, right? God conforms our heart to the image of his son, Jesus. And as we grow in Christ's likeness and engage in the world, we begin to pray like Jesus and our hearts align with his. And I love the word steadfast. You know, as I'm studying this text, I I keep going back to this word steadfast. Steadfast, man. We need to be persistent in prayer. We don't just pray once, right? But we need to pray daily, right? Repeatedly, routinely. And, And persistent prayer, it doesn't necessarily equal persistent opportunities, right? But what it does equal is persistent readiness, persistent readiness. Doors don't always open through a particular prayer, but what always happens is it aligns our heart with God, right? And praying puts us in a frame of mind to act when the door does open. You know, sometimes after praying for an opportunity, uh, something so obvious happens that you just have to act on it, right? But how often do we say we have to pray about it, <laughs> right? Right? But you, you were praying for an opportunity and something came and, and now you're saying you have to pray about it. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we pray ourselves out of the most obvious opportunities, but it's really because uh, the opportunity just isn't what we had hoped for. It's not what we had hoped for or what we had in mind. And we just have to act. We just have to act. You know, regarding Stream Song, uh, for quite some time, you know, I've been praying as our pastor for an opportunity to connect with a school in the Doylestown community. And uh, one way or another, uh, I came across, we, we came across a, a principal at Cold Spring Elementary School here in the Doylestown community. And, um, you know, we're acting on it. Um, we're, we're through our, our, through our relationship, we're going to be stocking, uh, the, the faculty break room with, uh, snacks and beverages and things like that. And ultimately our vision is at some point in early in the summer is to do a, a, a faculty room, uh, makeover, a makeover, um, to just to really bless the teachers and the faculty at this school. Um, So, man, I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about that as a church that we're going to be able to do that. Um, So, man, that's just something that's come out of prayer. Um, And uh, we just really need to be persistent in prayer and, and looking for those opportunities to act on. You know, the second thing we see in this text is, is this. It's being watchful and being watchful with thanksgiving. After prayerfully engaging with the world, we need to watch for answers. We need to watch for open doors. You know, uh, in 2011, uh, I remember as a raw Christian, uh, it was my first small group that really I had ever attended. And uh, I learned the simple prayer, God, show me where you're working. I had never prayed that prayer before. God, show me where you're working, right? We need to pray that prayer. Man, to every day, God, show me where you're working and then watch and then watch, right? Antennas up. We need to have our antennas up. Are we going about our day complacently or are we focused and scanning the environment, right? You know, is is the church, I want to ask this, is the church looking out on a sleeping world, right? Or searching for where, where God's working or is the world looking out on a sleeping church, 
You know, open doors are all around us and we just don't recognize them because we're busy watching over our own personal kingdom. And listen, we all have a personal kingdom. I do. And, and sometimes or often it can outsize God's kingdom, right? And we can miss and overlook what he's doing around us in our community, in our neighborhood, right? On our street, on our block, right? Um, you know, we, 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 we really look at it when, when we see an open door, we often look at it as people infringing on our kingdom when the way God sees it, God sees it as people inching up on his kingdom, right? So as we grow in Christ's likeness, we begin to see like Jesus, right? We begin to pray like Jesus here. We begin to see like Jesus, right? And see, watch for and see events and moments and people like he sees them, right? Man, a couple examples of this in my experience uh, at our old church. Um, you know, I was walking through the hallway at our old church and out the window, there's a, there's a field across the street. And I saw this guy, he was just golfing in the field next to the church. He had a golf club and he was just hitting some shots. And I was like, man, what a great opportunity. I'm going to go out there right now. And I'm just going to go out there and talk to him. I, we have that commonality. I used to be a PGA golf professional. And uh, so I love golf. I still do. And, uh, I, you know, that was something, that was a bridge that I, I felt was, that I could use to connect with him. And uh, I just went out there and just talked to him. Uh, we connected for about 15 minutes and just talked a little bit. Uh, I invited him out to church and, um, you know, things like that. So, but, uh, you know, I, I was watchful and when, when I saw something, I acted on it. And, uh, you know, another example is one day my, my car died out on the, the front, the street the, in the front of our house. And I had to get a tow truck driver to come jump the car. And, uh, man, the tow truck car the driver, he ended up being this, uh, this gentleman that, um, he was a very, very heavy man. And, um, but he was really struggling, you know, he was really struggling and, I was asking him, like, he was breathing heavily. I was like, you all right, man? Like, you okay? Uh, it was just kind of abnormal how much he was struggling. And, and he started telling me that he has heart issues and uh, he doesn't know what to do about it. And um, he, he, he was talking about how he could die. You know, he could die. And, and I, I, I kind of, I, I told him, I was like, hey, man, you know, you could die at any moment. Um, and he was like, yeah, you're kind of right. <laughs> So I, I saw that as just an opportunity to share the gospel with him the best that I could in that situation, in that circumstance. And I was able to do that. And, you know, he, he, he agreed and said he believed. Um, he also had some, some quips with the church and, uh, you know, some, some hangups and um, some beef uh, with, with, with Christians. But listen, at the end of the day, um, I just shared the gospel with him and did my job. And I, I trust God with everything else uh, after that. Uh, man, another example is uh, in Doylestown. Um, I was at the Starbucks and uh, I, I love drumming, drums. And at the Starbucks, there was like this 18 or 19 year old guy. Um, he was just like hand drumming on, on the on the, uh, on the table. And, um, you know, I kind of used that as a bridge. I was like, Hey man, I really love drums. I appreciate your hand drumming there. And, um, we started talking and, you know, I told him about how we were planting a new church here in Doylestown. We ended up meeting a few times for lunch. Um, man, we studied John 15 together, um, which is just a gospel rich text. And, um, you know, it, 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 and that was just a great opportunity. Um, he kind of ghosted me uh, after those couple lunch meetings, and, and hey, that's okay. Um, but man, we, we just took advantage of an opportunity that came about and just trying to be watchful and using uh, bridges to do that. And sometimes it fails. Sometimes it fails. You know, at another Doylestown Starbucks, uh, I love the movie Top Gun. <laughs> so uh, I saw a guy there sitting next to me. He had a Top Gun hat on. And uh, I just kind of used that as an opportunity, as a bridge to be like, hey, man, you know, I love that movie Top Gun. I can't help but notice you have that hat on, um, trying to use it as a, a way to spark conversation. And, you know, it failed. That This time he was like, he basically was like, yeah, like, I don't know anything about Top Gun. This is just a hat that was given to me. <laughs> so the conversation just kind of got uh, awkward. Um, but man, you know, you, you just got to look out. You got to be watchful for your surroundings and use these bridges as opportunities to connect uh, with people. The third thing that we see in this text 
is this. It's be walking in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. You know, following Jesus as God's pattern for full and authentic living. You know, our lives are to reflect his living, a life that follows the pattern of godly wisdom in Christ. It'll lay the foundation for witness to the world. Walking in sin and in folly, it deconstructs the foundation for our witness to the world. As we grow in Christ, we begin to think like Jesus, right? We begin to think like Jesus and we assume his wisdom, right? And, and through his wisdom, you know, we, it's, it's, we, bec- we, begin, uh, we, we become wiser in knowing what to say and when to say it and how to say it. You know, and we need to be making the best use of our time. You know, I'm, I'm, I have a side job, as you all may know. Um, uh, I'm a high school g- head golf coach, and uh, I just love it. I love doing it for a couple months every fall. And um, I'm always asking the question, uh, how am I going to love these kids through golf? Right? We need to be asking that question in everything we do. You know, if you're a real estate agent, how am I going to love people through this job? Right? If you work in a grocery store, how am I going to love people through this job? You know, even if it's a cashier or whatever it is, you got to be asking that question. And, you know, I've been coaching now for eight years, making investments in kids. And, um, man, I've been gaining so much trust with the kids and with parents. And uh, I've been able to position my faith among them wisely. Um, and I don't want to lose my position of influence. And ultimately, this trust that I've, I've cultivated with the kids has given me an opportunity to have some great conversations with these kids. Um, so I, and I don't want to lose that. I have to be wise about how I navigate uh, that position of influence. Man, the fourth thing, the fourth thing that we see here in this text is letting our speech always be gracious and seasoned with salt. You know, what's your default speech, right? What's your, we all have a default speech. Uh, I know, I know the difference between Brian and Christian Brian. There's a difference between Brian and Christian Brian. You know, if we're honest, our default speech is actually often maybe defensiveness or cynicism or pessimism or talking over people or speaking and maybe not really listening, right? As we grow in Christ's likeness, our default should be changing to graciousness, uh, patience under any circumstance. And listen, it's not just in conversations specifically about Jesus that these things apply. It's always, as the text says, always, right? It's any conversation, whether it's politics, football conversations with friends, hard conversations with our families. You know, witnessing witnessing for Christ isn't just when I'm asked specifically about Jesus, but it's also when I talk about what I think about the Eagles. (laughs) And y'all don't want to know what that is. (laughs) Man, so, uh, you know, in 2005, uh, we were introduced uh, to a whole new way of engaging with people, you know, uh, for better or for worse. Um, And that's social media. That's social media. You know, these verses apply to social media, man, just as much as face-to-face interactions. You know, we have to show incredible wisdom and tact in how we use social media. And perhaps the premium is higher because people generally only see words on Facebook or social media. They don't see faces, tones, and context, right? So, you know, I want to ask you, does the graciousness of our speech in our words, our word selection, awaken people's sleeping spirituality like this smelling salt? Like, are our words seasoned with salt uh, that Paul says here in the text? Uh, Man, uh, the fifth thing in here that I want to talk about is intentionality. You know, as I study these verses... I'm confronted personally by how intentionally these directives infer that we need to be living. And I'm confronted by how none of these are our default behaviors. Let's be honest. These aren't our default behaviors. 
you know, self-centeredness is our default mode. And, and these directives are quite contrary to self-centeredness and they venture us into great selflessness, right? Man, living, living for Jesus, living on mission for Jesus, it takes an incredible amount of selfless intentionality, right? An open door from God, it simply depends on how intentional that we're setting our mind off ourselves, right? And on others on a given day, on others around us. You know, when the pandemic hit, um, when the pandemic first hit, uh, I really saw it as an opportunity where I could be intentional. And if people in my neighborhood on our street hadn't already known that we were Christian, uh, now is the time to, to go a step further. And um, uh, I, I dropped off a letter in everybody's mailbox, just kind of a um, saying that we were there for everybody. If anybody needs food or whatever it is, if, if they need somebody to talk to, um, that we're there for them. And I included a, a great gospel uh, of, a Bible verse from the book of Philippians. And um, I just took that opportunity as, a, as, as an intentional uh, way to, um, to, to really get out in front of that. You know, and it's also in just creating relationships right around us in our, in our neighborhood or on our street. You know, it, uh, we, 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 we had this community snowblower where uh, uh, two or three uh, families have kind of pitched in financially to buy like this, you know, diesel snowblower for the winter. And it actually took me a while to realize what was happening. But it, 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 it's this, this, this shared snowblower has created like this little sub community uh, of men. And um, I'm, I'm convicted that I really want to take more advantage of that little sub community that's been formed. And, um, you know, uh, I have a guy also another example uh, is I have a guy a few houses away um, I, I've personally designated him as uh, the guy I borrow things from. You know, I've borrowed nails from him, a drill. I've borrowed his lawnmower before, you know, but I've used it as an intentional way to connect with somebody, you know. Um, and every time I borrow something, it just brings us together again. We're able to talk a little bit and get to know each other. And um, he, he's just kind of the guy that's, um, that I've chosen to, to be that guy who I borrow things from. Um, and I want to be intentional about that and, uh, and, and continue to have conversations with him and, and making it a, a relationship there. And hopefully God uses it um, for his glory. Uh, and for his namesake. You know, we often think that the greatest work is somewhere else where we're not, right? Uh, maybe somewhere far away. But the greatest work is more often right in front of us, where we already are. It's just a matter of being intentional. However, you know, increasing familiarity of our surroundings often breeds increasing contempt for our surroundings. The more we get comfortable with our surroundings and people that we meet and that we know, the more complacent we get, right? So we need to be asking God to, to freshen and renew our hearts and our minds for our street, for our neighbors, for our coworkers, for those, those, those uh, employees at the grocery store or whatever it is. The gospel calls us to be radically relational. We want to do God's work, uh, but often we want to keep people at arm's length in, in, in doing it, right? And the result is we actually start treating people like business transactions. And we're, we're, but we're to engage with people in the normal rhythms of life right where we are. And we're to cultivate genuine relationships and relate with others and not just peer into their worlds, but step into their worlds like Jesus to incarnate with them like Jesus did, right? Now, listen, I know God isn't calling any of you to send 30,000 Evites to everybody in the Doylestown community for a s'mores party, right? But I do know for a fact that God has uniquely positioned every one of us, even in a pandemic, even in a pandemic. You know, a pandemic makes things a little more complicated. There's no doubt about it, but it really shouldn't stop us, right? We just have to rethink how we do it, how we do it. We all have a job. We all have neighbors. We all have social circles and we all live on a block. We all go to grocery stores and things like that. And we, we should be giving people access to our lives because it's really access to the kingdom that they may not have had otherwise. 
Man, so I want to conclude on this, on some thoughts. You know, I was thinking about this. Uh, it's, it's known that everybody has like a carbon footprint. Everybody has a carbon footprint. You know, a carbon footprint is this trail of carbon emissions that we're all leaving behind us as we live day to day. I want us to think about our lives like that, right? I want us to think about our walk with Jesus like that. We all have the potential, right, for a Jesus footprint, right? A Jesus footprint that we leave behind uh, in our community. Uh, but we, listen, we can't ultimately do it if we just try harder, right? Uh, and giving ourselves motivational speeches and things like that. It's not about bending our will or our behavior. It's about changing the core essence, right, of our hearts, and our, our heart's movements and our heart's motivations. The natural man does not want to do these things. It does not want to do these things. I experience in my own self, man, the, the, the battle between the spirit and the natural man inside of me in doing these things. The natural man does not want to do these things because of self-centeredness of our hearts. What we need is outside intervention. And, and this only arises, it only arises out of an increasing understanding of the gospel. That because God built community with us through the gospel, through the cross, at great cost to himself. So we should then engage with our social circles at a cost to ourselves. Jesus was remarkably liberal with his life that he died for us, right? The gospel, when rightly believed, empowers us to be liberal with our lives, with others. Listen, I'm not hitting a home run in every one of these areas. I can promise you that. I'm not. You know, most of these stories uh, really have been a result of me uh, trying to, right, in, in, in the spirit. But ultimately, they've been a result of me bumbling around in that effort, just bumbling around. But with some intentionality, with some intentionality and a deeper, a deepening understanding of the gospel in my own heart, uh, it carries me from day to day. The cross of God's grace is the great spiritual smelling salt that seasons our hearts and minds. And insofar as we have a deepening understanding of the gospel, we'll pray. And not only will we pray, we'll pray steadfastly. Insofar as we have a deepening understanding of the gospel, we will be watchful. We'll be watchful. Insofar as we have a deepening understanding of the gospel, we'll walk in wisdom will walk in wisdom. Insofar as we have a deepening understanding of the gospel, we will let our speech always be gracious. And insofar as we have a deepening understanding of the gospel, we'll be intentional. We'll be intentional. Man, so I want to ask you these questions that I ask myself. You know, what areas are you weak in? What areas are you weak in and what areas are you strong in? You know, one of, my, one of my big weaknesses is just prayer. You know, I pray, but I can't say I'm steadfast in my prayer. I can't say I'm steadfast in my prayer. I think one of my strengths, one of my strengths is, is intentionality. It's intentionality. And, um, you know, so we need to be asking those questions. Where are we weak and where are we strong? And we need to continue to go back to the gospel and to let the gospel, right, to remember the gospel and to let the gospel empower you to greater heights in these five areas. And as we do that, the Holy Spirit is going to do his bidding through the gospel as we return to it routinely and repeatedly and on a daily basis. Man, let's pray. Father, God, I thank you. Uh, I thank you for just your character and I thank you for your words. I thank you for your challenges, Lord. I thank you, uh, Lord, uh, that, that you would um, call us into a partnership with you. Father, help us to just to love people so well on, in our neighborhoods, in our streets, um, everywhere we go. Help us to love people so well 
and just to be radical in that, Father. And um, God, I pray that you would use that. I pray that you would use that, Lord, for your redemptive purposes. And God, help help us to to take the gospel, and then to not not let not let our natural man just kind of hinder uh, ourselves from from sharing in that work that you want to do around us, Lord. And Father, I, I pray that we would. Um, that we would leave a Jesus footprint, Father, that we would leave this trail of love, uh, of sharing, and man, just uh, this radical living that you call to us that reflects uh, your your sacrificial grace on the cross, Lord. And um, God, uh, just speak, you, you have spoken to us, Father, not through my words, but you have spoken to us through your words. And uh, may my words only illuminate your words and and help us to understand them more. And uh, I thank you for uh, this time in our our church and uh, help us to love you more, Lord. And we can only do that by understanding how much you love us. And the cross tells us all of that. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, thank you so much for, uh, for joining me. Uh, I hope you were blessed by, this, by God's word uh, this morning. Uh, as always, if you need anything, you know where I am and you know where we are. So please reach out to us. And I uh, hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Take care. Peace.